माई चैनल अग्ञा सो राइट नाउ टूडे क्लास इट्स अबाउट डिमांड को इन द केस ऑफ सिंगल कमोडिटी विथ कंसिडरिंग डिमिनिशिंग मार्जिनल यूटिलिटी डी एम यू आई हैव कंसिडर्ड एज अ डिमिनिशिंग मार्जिनल यूटिलिटी हियर सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस टॉपिक यू हैव टू सी द प्रीवियस क्लासेज टू क्लासेज विच आई हैव डन टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज टी यू वॉट इज एम यू and what is diminishing marginal utility if you understand that only in that case you can understand this so in the pu karnataka government so they have given this question for six mark question the previous topic which i have discussed which is the law of diminishing marginal utility that is also for the six marks and this question is also for six marks so let me explain about this so the demand curve let me talk about what exactly demand is the demand means so if you are seeing anything if you are liking just any of the good it won't be considered as demand if you want in economics in economy so in economics if you want to consider anything as a demand you have to fulfill some of the conditions which do which kind of conditions it is the first condition is desire to buy if you are seeing anything you should have a desire so definitely you if you have a desire only then you're going to buy it if you don't have a desire definitely nobody is going to buy the first thing desire desire is nothing but so you can say that uh, you're going to like something by seeing it by uh, somebody is wearing so because of any of the reason you are liking something so you should like first you started liking one of the commodity any of the good so after that you should have a ability to buy the second point i'm going to talk about ability to buy what is ability means you're just liking it it won't be considered as demand to consider that as a demand you should have a ability that means you should be able to spend for it you should have that much money in your pocket if you don't have that much money in a pocket again this won't be considered as demand and the third one you have to fulfill that is willingness to buy willingness to pay otherwise willingness to buy so you have desire you are like you are really liking that good at the same time you have ability to pay but at the same time you should be willing to pay so many time it happens with you guys that you are liking that good you are really you are you having that much money with you but so many times you feel like because of so many reasons you feel like it doesn't worth paying i don't need right now so then you will not buy you have money you have desire you are liking it but still you are not willing to pay you have money in your pocket but you feel like sometime so this good doesn't worth paying yet the this good doesn't worth buying so then you going to stop purchasing it you are not going to consume it you are not going to buy it so in this case in these three conditions if you are not going to fulfill the first one you should like it the second one you should have that much money ability to pay the third one you have money are you willing to buy are you going to buy it you already purchased so these all three conditions you have to fill it so then at the same time two more extra conditions what you have to fulfill that is you have to demand that good in the particular time it is not like right now you are liking and in the future after 10 years you going to buy then right now it won't be considered as a demand so the time you are buying only that time will be considered so you have to specific be specific about the time the next one the particular price whatever goods and services in a market anywhere you going to buy that all goods and services are priced so if you are going to buy it all the goods and services are as i said it is priced you should be able to buy that price for example if i'm going to buy this pen in a market if anybody say this pen is 200 rupees so i should be agreed to buy this pen for 200 rupees so that's a particular price so all the five things especially you are what you are demanding in that price but that particular time and that particular price if you are considering these all stuff then finally it will be called as demand for a commodity demand yeah demand for commodity any of single single things will be missed here any of the things especially in these three anything will be missed so then it will be not considered as demand so next one whenever you going to consume any of the good definitely so many things are going to influence
against you. So most probably it can be advertisement, it can be like uh, your demonstration effect we call it as, any of your friends, your family, any of the people they are wearing, they are eating. So after seeing them, uh, you feel like you want to buy it. So that will be called demonstration effect. So this way, so many, because of so many reasons, you will be influenced. You have passion about it, you are habitual to use it. So many reasons are there to influence the demand. So what are the main influential things? So many influential things are there too which influences the demand to buy this, any of the particular good. But specifically we are going to talk about few of the things here. The few of the things, the first thing which we are going to talk about, so the things which is influences the demand, those are called determinants of demand. The first one, let me talk about the price of the good. What is the price of the good? So, this is uh, we, logically we already uh, discussed about that. Uh, the production possibility curve in the first chapter when I was dis discussing in the previous classes. So, you just type up uh, the production possibility curve, uh, complemental economics, my channel. So, definitely you will get this topic in the previous classes in the first chapter topic. That time I have discussed this, the relationship between the price and the demand. Again, I am going to talk about it because it is a demand curve. The price is the most influential thing I feel. Whenever you go to market, before seeing any quality, before analyzing anything, the first question what we are going to ask is, what exactly the price of that gold? After knowing the price, only that, after knowing the price, you will think whether you are going to continue seeing other goods, or you are going to quit, you are going to come back and you are not going to purchase. Anywhere, anything we are going to purchase, the first thing we are going to quote the question, what exactly the price of it. So definitely the first thing which is going to influence your demand, that is price. So next is the price of other goods. Other goods, yeah, other goods. So don't you think you will be influenced to purchase that particular good by seeing others. For an example, if you are considering a related goods, price of other goods, otherwise price of related goods. The related goods can be complementary goods, substitute goods, other goods will be. What is complementary goods? For an example, if I am buying a car. So I will think about whether I have to purchase diesel car or shall I go with the uh, petrol car. Diesel, if the diesel price is more, so then I will go with the petrol car. If the petrol cost is more, so the price is more, so then I will go with the diesel car. So this way, the price of other goods also matters to buy any of the good you have to demand any of the thing. So next one. The price of related good we are mentioning with the peer. The price of the good we are, uh, you know, uh, expressing with the alphabet P. The consumer's income, isn't it? This is also one of the key for your consumption. How much money you are having on the basis of that you are going to demand. You have earning like crores to crores. In that case, definitely your consumption rate is high. So at the same time, you are going to buy maximum goods. You want to buy all the luxurious goods and services. But if your income is very less, so definitely you will stick on to the basic needs what is available uh, to survive. If the motto will be only surviving when your income is less. So that time you are not going to demand much of the goods which is luxurious. So definitely the person income, your consumer income definitely matters when he is going to consume any of the goods and services. So definitely income influences a lot after price. The last one which thing is going to influence that is his taste and preferences. Whose? His means what? Consumers. The consumer taste and preference is also going to influence, isn't it? If you are not liking it, if you don't want to consume, why are you going to buy it? Why are you going to think about price? Why are you going to think about the price of related goods? Why are you going to think about your income? You are not interested. Simple. So, you are going to buy that good because you are interested. You are interested, that means your taste and preferences say that your taste in that good, you are really liking that good, the taste for that good is there, that's the reason why you are going to demand that good. So, these are the, so many other influential things are there for demand, as if now these four are called as, you know, the significance of this in the demand uh, influencing, it's pretty more. So, we are considering only four, the one is a price, Price of related goods, which is PR. The consumer income, which is Y. See, for the income, we could take in I instead of Y. But I, see, in economics, we have considered each and every alphabet with different, different words. So, I usually we use it for the investment. For that reason, whenever we are getting income, consumer's income, we are considering Y alphabet. The last one is the his taste and preferences. We are representing that with the help of T now. So now 
these are all very influential these are all called as independent variable the qde is called as dependent variable so when we if you want to analyze whether the relationship between the variables it is a positive and the negative you have to consider that individually so that is what we are trying to do with the help of the law of demand the law of demand says whenever okay we'll go with the equation demand is a function of p so that simple is if price is high if price is increasing demand will decrease if price is decreasing demand will increasing both the variables are moving in opposite direction as i said before how exactly what exactly negative relationship and positive relationship we already discussed in the previous classes in the first chapter production possibility frontier curve so for exactly to understand the diagram you have to see particular that video to understand about the curve shape and uh, what kind of a slope it is so now so here both the variables are moving in the opposite direction can you see here price is increasing demand is decreasing price is decreasing in that demand is increasing both the variables are moving in opposite direction so it's called negative theory so when i'm talking about negative theory let me explain this particular diagram now so can you see here in the x axis in the y axis we have price which is this and the x axis we have a quantity so in this case we have the maximum price uh, it is uh, ranging between 0 to 50 and the quantity is ranging between 0 to 100 so this way you see now how exactly the law of demand work if the price is 40 people are not at all interested they are consuming lesser than 10 the quantity what they are demanding it is lesser than 10 so i have not written anything so if you can you can consider by assuming it is 5 units only so when price is decreasing can you see downward sloping so the arrow mark is downward the price is decreasing to 30 you can see this curve the demand the quantity of demand the quantity of demand increase to 15 you can consider this as a 15 now so now again the price got drop so if you think the price is only 20 so definitely again the consumer is willing to buy more and more good so then definitely the consumption will be 30 units so then again the price is going to drop to the 10 units is consumption increase to 55 so this way whenever price is going to decrease you have seen quantity is increasing isn't it whenever price is decreasing the quantity demand is increasing if price start increasing that means demand is going to decrease so this way the both the variables are moving in opposite direction so that's why it's called negative theory so now you can see the curve shape the curve shape here negative slope why it is a negative slope this is a reason is it clear now so now let's talk about what is the relationship with diminishing marginal utility then this is nothing but the law of demand so now we are going to talk about what exactly the relationship see the relationship between price and demand is called the law of demand which i said it now each successive unit that means whenever i am increasing my consumption my consumption was 5 first then increased to 15 then increase to 30 then increase to 55 that means each successive unit the successive unit means my consumption each time it got added the each time my consumption which is added to the total utility that's called marginal utility so here they are talking about whenever the excess i am continuing with my consumption each successive unit the extra unit which i am adding to the total unit that commodity the it is giving me the lower utility the margin the law of diminishing margin utility they are talk they are trying to talk about continuously when i'm going to consume any of the good so without giving any break my satisfaction my utility is going to diminish so here price is decreasing so i'm consuming more and more my satisfaction got decrease so utility is decreasing they're trying to say that your utility is decreasing because you continuously consume 
consuming it price is decreasing so you have started consuming more and more because of that utility also got decreased so for each unit your utility is getting decreased so do you feel like you want to pay for that more and more price no so definitely again and again the price will be dropped because each extra unit what you are consuming that is giving you very less a satisfaction when you getting less satisfaction why you feel like giving more and more money for that yeah as much as you paid before for example when i consumed the first apple i have paid 20 rupees i after that my utility got decreased for the second unit so definitely i feel like giving 80 rupees when purchasing the third one so definitely uh, compared to second unit my satisfaction decreased more than the second so definitely i feel like giving 50 rupees so this way that's the reason why price is getting decreased each time that's what here when so individual will not be willing to pay as much for the additional unit whenever they going to add extra units of apple or any of the good they are not willing to pay as much as they were paying before for the same commodity so that's why as i said the both are very the way both variables are moving in the opposite direction so the slope of this will be negative slope so this is a mixture of the law of demand and the law of diminishing marginal utility in the previous class i told you the law of diminishing marginal utility is a base theory that gave uh, so many other theories to establish the law of demand is one of a example theory which uh, the, because of the law of demand uh, the law of diminishing marginal utility it came with so i hope you understood this topic so i'll meet you with next class with the cardinal approach thank you so much